Hello cadets, this is Major Thevenin. We're going to be discussing chapter 10, medical emergency. In this chapter, we're going to learn different life-threatened emergencies in the body system, from neurology to abdominal or GI, versus in also in endocrine disorders, uh, cardiovascular, respiratory system, and uh, gen genital ur urinary or renal, or the short term is GU system, all right? Common medical conditions include angina pectoris, uh, heart attacks, dyspnea, asthma, stroke, hypoglycemia or diabetic coma, and abdominal pain. The EMR can prepare to treat medical patients by studying the signs, symptoms, and treatments of, of each condition. Just to recap, as you make your way to the scene, you size it up. Is it safe? What might you encounter, etc. Think about your primary assessments, your ABCs, if all that is stable, history taking, then you move on to your secondary assessment. And if there has if there is no higher level of care that has relieved you, continuing continuing reassessment. Patient assessment in medical emergencies. Review the dispatch information. You know, what did the dispatch tell you? Is it a male, female, the age, and the issue that you may that you may encounter? Carefully assess the scene to identify safety issues. All right. Then you have your primary care, primary assessment involving your ABCs. Is the patient responsive, and what is the chief complaint? Always introduce yourself, who you are, and you are here to help. Usually, it's best to obtain medical history on a medical patient before you perform the secondary assessment. Again, the medical history gives you an idea of what's going on in terms of if you see a 46-year-old uh, male comes in with chest pain, you know, medical history, a pertinent medical history, um, do they have history of high blood pressure? Do they have history of diabetes? Um, do they take medication, etc.? You know, that definitely helps you with um, overall assessment of the patient. Using your sample history, remember what that entails. Obtain your patient's vital signs. Again, remember, know what is abnormal versus normal. Monitor the patient throughout ongoing reassessment. And we know there's different time frames before stable patients versus unstable patients, how often you reassess them. So please review the previous chapters for those. Remember to reassure the patient. General medical, general medical condition may have different causes, yet results in similar signs and symptoms. Initial treatment can stabilize the patient until other EMS or hospital personnel can take over. Alter mental status means sudden or gradual decrease in the patient's level of responsiveness. Using your AVPU alert verbal pain unresponsiveness to assess mental status. When assessing the patient's mental status, consider two factors. The initial level of consciousness and any change in that level of consciousness. That's where a time frame comes in. You would, if you may ask a person or uh, a, a, pers a family member or bystander saying, you know, at what time did these symptoms start? At what time... Um, did you notice a change in the level of consciousness? Altered mental status continues. So what can cause these things? Altered level of consciousness, a head injury, a fall, um, a baseball to the head. Um, shock can be either um, different, there's different causes of shock. But in overall right now, shock, decreased level of oxygen to the brain, hypoxia, stroke, slow heart rate, high fevers, Infection, poisoning, 
a low level of blood glucose, also called hypoglycemia. Insulin reaction, psychiatric conditions also can cause a pe person to be altered. So initial treatment, you come into the scene, again, patients, your ABC, a normal and a normal body temperature, maintain, sorry, maintain the patient's ABCs, uh, normal body temperature. If it's uh, cold outside, you cover them up. If they, uh, if it's heated outside, maybe you might take off a, a layer or two. Keep the patient from additional harm. If the patient is unconscious and, and has not sustained trauma, place the patient in a recovery position or use an airway adjunct. Okay? Be prepared for suc to suction. Seizures can cause mental status. So let's uh, talk about what, se what are seizures. <coughs> seizures are caused by a sudden episode of uncontrolled electrical impulse in the brain. Seizures produces a shaking movement, involve the entire body, lasts about one to two minutes, usually leave the patients unconscious. We call that a pulse ictal phase. Okay, they're no longer shaking, but they're not really respond responding after the seizure episode. Generalized seizure causes by sudden high fever. Uh, we call that febrile seizures. It happens a lot in uh, children. Absent seizures results in only a brief lapse of consciousness. Patients may blank, stare vacantly, or jerk one part of their body. Remember, doing these episodes, they're not responding, respond, responding to you. Hey, you may be like, hey, Bob, Martha. Hey, Bob, Martha. You shake them, but they're not responding. Okay? Monitor the patient's ABCs in a range for transport. Seizures can be caused by epilepsy, meaning they have a history of, of, a, they have a history of epilepsy, um, trauma, uh, head injury, Stroke, shock, decreased level of oxygen in the brain, hypoxia can cause seizures, high fevers, infection, meaning there's an infect, high, high temperature, uh, infection, poisoning, over uh, drug use, brain tumor infection, uh, diabetic emergencies, uh, even pregnancy, keep that in mind. Always look at your patient overall. Um, Physically, you know, if it's a woman, uh, the, if their belly is uh, protruding out, maybe they might be pregnant and they're seizing. Um, now you have two patients, all right? You have the, the child and the mother, um, but mother takes precedence in terms of <clears throat> helping the mother out, hopefully helping the, the, the infant out as well. So treatments. Usually a seizure will be over by the time you arrive at the scene, usually. Not the case though. If it is not ended, if it's not, if it has not ended, focus on protecting the patients from injury. Once the seizure stops, ensure an open airway and place the patient in a recovery position. If the patient does not resume breathing, begin mouth to mouth or mouth mouth to mask or mouth to mouth breathing. You know, if they've if they went into respiratory respiratory arrest, administer supplemental oxygen as soon as you have it available. After a seizure, move the patient to a more comfortable private place. You will find it helpful to, uh, to be knowledgeable about some of the more specific medical conditions you may encounter as an EMR. That's why I sent uh, a few apps uh, to you cadets. You know, you have it in handy. Um, go scroll through it. Know the information, know at least where to find the information that you, that you, in case of an emergency, you know, you can quickly go back and refresh your mind. This information will help you assess, threat, assess, treat, and communicate more effectively with the patient. Heart conditions. The heart must receive a constant supply of oxygen or it will die. The heart receives, receives its oxygen through complex system of coronary artery. So coronary arteries are the, um, the main arteries that feed the heart itself. These arteries may narrow as a result of arteriosclerosis. So arteriosclerosis is um, like cholesterol buildup. Progressive 
Arterosclerosis can cause angina pectoris, um, meaning um, chest pain with exertioning oneself, heart attack, and cardiac arrest. So let's focus, let's see what angina pectoris is. It's the chest pain caused by inadequate flow to the blood, up to inadequate flow of blood and oxygen to the heart muscle itself. Also described as pressure or heavy discomfort, patients often short of breath, sweating, extremely frightening, and has a sense of doom. Acts the patient is already being treated for high, uh, heart condition and has and has nitroglycerin. Assist the patient in taking one pill or administer a spray underneath um, in their mouth. If the pain has not lessened in five minutes after the first dose, help the patient take another, and you can do a total of three, up to three. If the patient has not lessened in five minutes after the second one, um, assume the patient is having a heart attack and transport promptly. So, what is a heart attack? As you can see, this is the heart, and uh, these blood vessels right here are the coronary arteries. And this is the uh, clot they were talking about. It's either a blood clot or a severe buildup of cholesterol in the, in the artery itself. That's when, so a heart attack is when the coronary artery is completely blocked. Signs. The patient suffers immediate and severe pain. The pain may radiate from the chest to the left arm or to the jaw to the back. Patients usually show the breath, weak, sweating. Um, the medical term for sweating is diaphoretic and nauseated and may vomit. If a block artery is critical or large, the heart may stop completely. And that's why we, a complete cessation uh, of heartbeat is called a cardiac arrest. And that's where CPR is your first emergency treatment. Take the following action. Call for help. Talk to the patient to relieve his or her anxiety. Reassure the patient. Establish some kind of trust with the patient. Take the following, uh, move the patient as little as possible. Place the patient in the most comfortable position. Help the patient take one adult aspirin or two to four low dose aspirin. Uh, aspirin comes 81 milligrams. So <clears throat> if you do the, do the math, this is how much you give them, uh, 325 milligrams or 324 milligrams of aspirin. Administer oxygen. Be prepared to administer CPR if they have become unconscious and lost uh, their pulse. If you have an AED, have it brought to the patient and make sure it's ready to be used. So attach your AED to the patient. If you use it, if it's not used, good. But if you must, at least it's if you must, at least it's ready. CHF. It's caused by, see the heart is a pump. When it's not pumping very well, um, fluid can be backed up. So that's what CHF really is. The failure is the heart muscle, but the congestion is in the blood vessels. Symptoms, you have shortness of breath. You know, why, why would the patient be short of breath? Because fluid is backing up into the lung. You have rapid shallow breathing. Uh, it can be moist. You can be like gurgling respiration. Patient feels like they're drowning type of feeling. Profuse sweating. Uh, enlarged neck veins because things are backing up, right? Think about it like a sewer system. When something, was, was, when something is backed up, everything uh, before it will be backed up. So basically that's why you see uh, engorged neck veins, uh, swollen ankles, anxiety. Why your ankle swollen? Again, it's all about the sewer system um, scenario. What must you do? What can you do as an EMR? Take uh, place the patient in a sitting position with legs down to the legs down to drain some of the fluid back into the lower 
into the lower parts of the body, administered oxygen in a large quantity at a high flow, call for help, arrange prompt transportation. So dyspnea. It's either difficulty breathing and or shortness of breath. It can be um, there's <coughs> excuse me. As you can see, um, heart attacks. CHF can cause short of breath. So we're gonna see what other causes of difficulty breathing. Um, it can be pulmonary disease. You know, problems with the lung itself, in terms of COPD, emphysema, uh, bronchitis, pneumonia, asthma. Treatments, check your patient's airway, make sure it's not obstructed, um, check your vitals, in your vitals, check the, the rate of the breathing and uh, the, the depth of the breathing, are they sucking in air, do you see, do you see the, to, are they breathing so hard and so deep that you can see the, the ribs, you know, do we call that retractions? Place the patient in a comfortable position, provide reassurance, loosen any tightened clothing, administer oxygen. A cause of difficulty breathing is asthma. It's acute, acute spasm of the air passage associated with excess, excess mucus production and swelling of the lining of the respiratory uh, passage. Um, what, can, what can trigger an asthma attack? An allergen? Maybe somebody is allergic to cats and they walk, accidentally walked into a pet store. Um, severe emotional uh, stress, exercise, uh, respiratory infection can cause that. Either it can be viral versus bacterial. Asthma attacks kills about 3,600 people in the United States back in um, six years ago. Patients will have great difficulty exhaling and wheezing sound will be heard. Following the treatment steps in dyspnea, instruct the patient to perform pursed lips breathing. Um, I would advise, go to YouTube and type wheezing so you can hear wheezing so you, so you understand what it sounds like. Okay? Pursed lips. Why do they do that? Again, um, having a pursed lips kind of increases the pressure, <clears throat> so to speak, into the uh, into the airway. If ALS is not available, transport promptly. Leading cause of um, stroke. Leading cause of brain injury and insensibility in adults. Most strokes are caused by a blood clot that block that blocks blood flow. To one part of the brain. Some symptoms. You can have a headache, numbness, paralysis, weakness, um, dizziness, confusion. A patient can be drooling, inability to speak, difficulty seeing, unequal, unequal pupil eye, unconsciousness, seizures, respiratory arrest, incontinence, unresponsiveness, um, difficulty walking, also, I would add on, on there, too. So your Cincinnati pre-hospital stroke scale, in one of the apps also covers their, your Cincinnati stroke scale, used to determine whether a patient may have experienced a stroke. Okay, you have, um, basically covers, do you see facial droop? Is one side lower than the other or not, 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 um, the muscles not working, so to speak? Uh, then you look at the extremities, arm drift, and the speech. How is it? This is basically what your Cincinnati stroke scale is. Is it normal versus is it abnormal? Very quick. So treatment for it. First priority is maintain the patient's airway. Administer oxygen if you have it. If it is if if the patient is having a seizure, uh, preventing further injuries. 
lay them on the on the side so if they do vomit um <clears throat> or start foaming that these things do not go in the back of the airway Pre be prepared to administer rescue breathing if they stop seizing but yet has are in this post ictal phase they still have a they still have a pulse, they're still breathing, but not responding to you, to your commands. Place them in a recovery position. Provide emotional support by talking to you and touching the patient. Uh, some patients can be treated with drugs to dissolve the blood clot in the brain. Um, oh, this, um, arrange for prompt transportation. Always need to go to the hospital. Diabetes. Causes by body inability to process and use glucose. The body produces insulin through the pancreas, which enables um, which enables glucose to move into the individual cells. So you eat insulin spikes and uh, moves the glucose from the meals into your cells to be used. If the body does not produce enough insulin, the cell becomes starved for glucose and and, di and diabetes results. Hypo hypoglycemia occurs if the body has enough insulin but not enough blood glucose. Symptoms that you may encounter is pale, moist, they can be agitated, confused, uh, rapid weak pulse, headache, dizziness. They can be hungry, shaking, Rapid onset of symptoms within minutes. A person experiencing hypoglycemia may appear to be drunk. If the patient is unable to sh swallow, have him or her eat or drink something sweet. Remember the last time you were hungry. You were so hungry you were able to like be easily angered. You are very ir irritable and you are sweaty. You felt hot. You know, that might be a cause of your hypoglycemic. And the minute you ate something, the minute something touched your 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 um, your mouth, you feel a little bit better. So that's basically the treatment for hypoglycemia, on scene. <clears throat> so in your kit, I would advise to have something sweet in there, just in case you do encounter such patients. If the patient is unconscious, open the airway and assist breathing and circulation. Do not administer fluid or by mouth. Again, if they're unconscious, do not put anything in their mouth. You might cause them to, to choke, aspirate, um, anything that you put in their mouth into the pulmonary system. Some EMR carry tube of oral glucose gel or tablets that can be placed inside the cheek. Just said that. DKA, diabetic coma occurs when the body has too much blood glucose and not enough insulin. So you would get gather history of diabetes, the warm and dry uh, skin, rapid pulse, deep rapid breathing. It's just the body's mechanism for uh, for such condition. You start you can feel a fruity odor to the patient's breath. Signs and symptoms Weakness, nausea, vomiting, increased hunger, thirst, ur and increased urination, slow, slow onset of symptoms. This can take days. It can be misdiagnosed. It can be uh, misdiagnosed is, is pretty common. So this is just a chart that you can review the difference between hypoglycemia versus diabetic coma, which is hyperglycemic state. In general, giving... In general, give conscious diabetic patients sugar by mouth and arrange for prompt transport. If diabetic patient is unconscious, arrange for prompt transport nonetheless. Abdominal pain. The content of the abdomen are divided into hollow and solid structures. Hollow, hollow structures are really tube-like tubes through which content pass, such as um, your aorta. All right. Solid structures produce a substance, such as um, organs. Abdominal pain is common complaint. Caused by irritation of the abdominal wall, so acute abdomen, 
That's why it causes ir irritation of the ab abdominal wall. May result from infection or presence of blood in the abdominal cavity, some kind of trauma. Uh, that's kind of related to trauma. Pain can be referred to other parts of the body. <clears throat> For example, right? If you have right upper quadrant pain, sometimes you can feel the patient will say, I have some kind of right shoulder pain. So that's what that means, referred. referred. Um, the pain, the abdomen may feel as hard as has a board. That's what acute abdomen is. If it's rigid, it's acute. Patients may have nausea and vomiting, fever, diarrhea. Some patients will vomit blood because they are bleeding from the esophagus or stomach. If a patient has abdominal pain, monitor vital signs, treat symptoms of shock. Again, shock is an abnormal uh, blood pressure. If it's too low, Keep patients com comfortable, arrange for transport. Some causes, of that, some causes of abdominal pain. Abdominal aortic aneurysm, triple A. One, two, three, triple A. Causes acute abdomen. That's when there are your big, your aorta, the big vessel that travels from your heart all the way down to your, to, into your stump, into your abdomen, and it branches out to different part of the uh, different organs, etc., so that vessel has is about to burst or has burst uh, can cause a rigid abdomen, meaning of doubt. there's blood into the abdomen cause severe irritation. And this patient, these patients are in shock, meaning heart rate is way up because the heart is is pumping like crazy, trying to uh, uh, make blood flow as much as possible um, as much as it can. And uh, the blood pressure is down because, again, the blood is no longer in the vessels. It's in the abdomen. This occurs when one or more layers of the aorta becomes weakened and separated from the other layers of, a of the aorta. Risk factors, you have diabetes, high blood pressure, osteosclerosis, and heavy smoking. Treatment as an EMR. Comfortable position. Treat for shock. Handle these patients gently. Arrange prompt transport. They need to go to the ER and straight to the OR. Kidney dialysis patients. People with certain type of kidney disease are unable to filter waste products from the bloodstream. So they need to, every other day, go on the machine for hours and hours to clear their blood. Many patients with chronic renal failure must undergo hemodialysis. The patient blood, again, uh, once you Google hemodialysis and you can see a picture of it, give, 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 give you a better idea what it means. The patient blood passes through a machine that filters out the waste products and returns the clean blood back to the patient. Most hemodialysis patients have a shunt implanted in the arm or leg or chest, upper chest. A shunt is a surgical created connection between the artery and the vein. If the patient has a shunt, take the patient's blood pressure in the opposite arm, never over the shunt. So basically, if you look at the arms and you see a, a, like a weird uh, bulging on the arm, and you put your two finger to your first and your second and uh, third finger over it, and you feel a thrill, you know that is a shunt. If you do not see, feel a thrill, that means the shunt site is not working. But you never put a blood pressure cuff over such um, bulging on the arm. Okay? Patients may experience related, patient may experience emergencies related to the dialysis treatments. Low blood pressure due to, to the change in the body, shock due to decreased blood pressure, internal bleeding, maybe through the shot, uh, abnormal level of electrolytes. Uh, these patients who are in kidney failure and are dependent on hemodialysis, if they happen to miss one or two or few um, sessions of dialysis, remember, your 
the waste that your body is, is producing is not being cleared because you cannot make urine because your kidney does not work. So therefore, things get backed up like potassium, okay? And potass and your heart is very, very, very sensitive to potassium and can cause um, cardiac arrhythmias eventually to cardiac arrest, okay? So keep those in mind. To summarize, general medical conditions may have different causes yet results in similar signs and symptoms. It's usually best to collect medical history um, on the patient experiencing a medical problem before you perform a physical exam. Because a physical physical exam kind of if you yeah take a history take a history and do a quick physical exam um, that will <clears throat> your history taking can help you be a little more be a little more alert to the areas that you're examining to either rule in or rule out um, your differential of what can be going on with the patient. Altered mental status is a sudden gra gradual decrease in the patient's level of res responsiveness. Uh, seizures can are caused by episode of uncontrolled, elec uncontrolled electrical impulse in the brain. Specific, specific medical conditions include angina, heart attacks, CHF, which is con congestive heart failure, uh, dyspnea, which is difficulty breathing, stroke, hypoglycemia, diabetic coma, or, or a severe state of hyperglycemia, and abdominal pain. Okay? So this summarizes um, this chapter. Let's review, do some review questions. Signs and symptoms of stroke include all of the following except numbness and paralysis. I'll say yes. High fever. Maybe not. Drooling. Yes. Because drooling is basically one part of your mouth muscle is not working, so you're unable to keep your mouth, your muscle, your mouth closed. Um, so like saliva comes out on that side that's weakened. Unequal pupil size. So except the answer is high fever. All right. Question two, which of the following actions would not be appropriate when managing a patient who is suffering a heart attack? What should you, what, what's not good to do for a patient with heart attack? Place the patient in the most comfortable position. Remember, you're EMR, right? Comfortable position. Administer oxygen if, ava if available. Be prepared to administer CPR. Okay. Or move the patient as quickly as possible to ambulance for transport. Remember, you want to keep them calm as possible. So I say I think D is the uh, would not be appropriate compared if you compared A, B, and C. Okay, you want to move them quickly, but I think that's the less correct answer. Uh, three hypoglycemic occurs. Hypoglycemia occurs when a patient has consumed too many high-fat food, has enough insulin but not enough blood glucose, suffers severe dehydration, has too much blood glucose but not enough insulin. All right, so I think we can, by process of elimination, take A and C out because B and D are kind of similar. All right, so we need to... If you're a good test taker, you would say, yeah, uh, people who write tests are kind of tricky like that. They would give you totally opposite, and sometimes those are those one of the ones. All right, so let's look. Has has enough insulin, but not enough blood glucose. All right, so the glucose is low, so hypoglycemia. So B is the correct answer. All right, thank you very much for uh, viewing uh, this chapter.